Another thing I've uh, done over the years, because uh, I've always had plate boats, is um, I've got plumbed in uh, live bait tanks. Um, so what I mean by that is they're all natural, they're fully sealed compartments with holes drilled in the bottom. Uh, these, I've got two bait tanks here, there's one there, another one there. As you can see there's no pumps, no wires, no hoses, just holes drilled in the bottom of the boat. The holes are all drilled in the forward part of the hull, of the hulls, not, not, not the back. The reason why they're at the front and they're drilled exactly straight down is is because when they come along, when you, the water runs along, it actually creates bubbles when it hits those holes and it aerates the whole tank. And when, when you pull up and you're sitting still, the water then flushes in and out as your boat's moving around. You can actually put greenback herring in there that are on their side and dying, and you look in there three, four minutes later and they've all recovered. That's how good they are. So if you've got a plate boat, talk to your boat, boat builder about putting in sealed bait tanks. Now being a sealed compartment, what we do is drill holes in the bottom of your boat. And what we do is drill 10 to 20 holes around the 8 to 10 millimetres in size. Any bigger and your medium sized live prawns may escape, so 10 millimetres is probably the maximum that you want to go. The reason why we drill them straight down and we don't face them forward is because if you face them forward they're going to all act like pickups and you're going to get so much turbulence in there thrashing your bait around and they'll lose their scales and die. So by drilling them straight up and down when you're running along at 20 or 30 knots what happens is as the water passes under your hull it touches those holes and creates bubbles so in effect it's actually aerating the water as you're going along. And then when you pull up at your fishing spot, the natural sloshing of the boat allows new water to come in, aerated water to come in and old water to flush out eventually. And you can also, if you like, drill holes in the back of your boat just below the water line so that some water flushes out when you're actually travelling along. So that's another thing, even though I don't do it with this one, some of the earlier boats I've had, I have done it. Now, there is one hole you should put in there to act as a pickup when you're going along and that's only a, you only want like a quarter a quarter size drill bit you drill that in the front part of the tank away from the other holes in the corner and you just drill it straight and then you hold the drill to the side so that the drill bits facing forward so it's actually acting as a pickup hole and it's only a small pickup hole and that will help with some minor circulation when you're actually traveling along now, it's not an exact science. As you can see, I've also drilled some smaller holes to the rear, also very slightly facing forward. Not as much as the small pickup hole though. But I just noticed that when I was running along, I just needed that little bit more circulation, so I popped those ones in. It can be a little bit of trial and error, and depends how your boat runs along. All you want is a gentle circulation when you're running at speed. But for the rest of the holes, like I said, you just want them drilled straight down because you won't get massive turbulence in there and they just act as an uh, aerator because bubbles bounce off them and aerate the water. Another benefit of the holes all being in the bottom, especially forward in the tank, is it allows things like herring that do shed a few scales and stuff during the day um, and even prawns sometimes. So what happens is it allows a lot of that crap to actually wash down out of the tank so the fish aren't choking on all the particles and bits and pieces. Another good benefit of having these sealed boxes built into the back of your boat is the simple fact that you can actually mount transducers into where that sealed compartment is and you don't have to worry about the holes drilled in your boat going into another part of your boat where if something happens with those holes through electrolysis and start leaking, the water can access your boat. If that does ever happen with um, any brackets or, or bolts or anything like that, the water's only going to go into your live bait tank can't go anywhere else. So if you're like me and you like to mount 1600 transducers across your transom, um, it gives you the option to actually mount into those compartments. I have one on either side, I've got a live bait tank built in here like so and the same on the other side. Even though I've got some brackets outside that area welded on to be able to mount transducers to. So that's a good little tip too for when you're mounting transducers. Always go to a boiler maker and get some uh, C-section mounted onto the back, welded onto the back and you screw your transducers into that. Um, you can do that right along if you want to but uh, in my instance I've got three of these mounted across there and the Panoptix transducer here, the Garmin Panoptix, I've just screwed that straight into the bait tank 
because uh, I know it's not going to leak into the boat anywhere. It's just going to go straight into the tank if anything ever does happen. Now I do know of a few people who have actually had these built into a boat that does have a pressed hull. And they've had to go to a boiler maker and get the special bits cut out that actually slot down into the planing strokes. Now, um, they, they seem to have gone okay. I haven't heard of their boat sinking just yet, but always best with plate boats. If you're gonna do it in a boat that has a pressed hull, go and consult a boiler maker first, just to make sure your aluminium's thick enough, and then he can actually cut out the hulls properly to sit down inside the uh, planing strakes. One of the major benefits of the, these is, the simple fact is that when I put my herring in there, um, they might be all swimming around on their back to start with, but you look back in there three minutes later, and they're all swimming around good as gold, and they last for ages in there. And uh, of course the other benefits are, no batteries going flat, no bilge pumps that you might use to pump water in, uh, or whatever pump that you do use. If you have a plumb system in there, where you are running pipes into the boat, into a separate compartment. So you haven't got any of those worries whatsoever. So um, if you've got a plate boat, or you're buying a new boat, and, it's, and an alloy boat at that, check out some of the manufacturers that are bringing plate boats out, and talk, about, talk to them about customising them into the back of your boat. Or if you've got an existing plate boat, go and see a boiler maker and see what he can do for you. If you like this little tip and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you only want some special tips that I send out by email only, head on over to www.ryanmoodyfishing.com and sign up to join our free fishing community. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and I'll see you next time.